Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Okay, so the purpose of the prime time Saturday night meeting is to talk about the reason to come to Alcoholics Anonymous, to expose alcoholism not just as a word but as a living mind power disease, how the disease appears in our lives today in order to deepen our awareness of what we are up against. Alcoholism is called ism because it is alive and functioning and needs to be treated We discuss here strictly the disease as it manifests in each of our own personal lives. The way our behaviour is this day, the way we react or look at people, places and things. We do not talk about drunk logs, yesterday's problems or blaming other people. We talk only about looking inwardly, describing how self behaves in the day we are in. First, we will have a speaker who will talk about the purpose of coming to AA for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. Then we will have sharing and or questions and answers. Sharing is strictly limited to five minutes or less. You will receive a warning signal at the end of three minutes. We want everyone to have a chance to participate. We do not allow foul language as these meetings are recorded and CDs travel all over. Um, okay, so I'm Daniel, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> and... Uh, Kat asked me to speak, but she's not here, so thank you, Kat, in your absence, having me out to speak. Um, it's, it's good to be here, and I have to say that this meeting, um, when I speak here, I always get really nervous. And so my prayer for tonight is just to help me, you know, this is what I'm sort of saying in my head, help me say the truth, you know, um, and help me say how it is. And my... Um, my experience in coming here is 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 that I hear a lot of truth and there's so like my my head is like a little lie machine you know it's lots of false information up there and uh that's what I really like but that's I mean that's one of the things that keeps me coming back is I and especially prime time actually because I'll, I'll sit in a meeting and um I almost uh I get a real sense of relief when I just hear people's honesty so thank you all for your honesty and thank you all for your help as well. I, uh, I've got, I, I, I'm gonna tell the truth, like I was trying not to think about what I was gonna say tonight, um, and I did come up with some good things today, um, but now I can't remember any of them. So that's just the way it goes. Um, there is one thing I actually wanted to say, which is, I've got this gratitude journal, which is really cool, um, which I don't write in enough, but I, I, uh, I try and make, I'm trying to make it a habit. And, uh, in the, in the, one of the back pages, it says, if the only prayer I say in my whole life is thank you, then that would suffice. And, uh, that's really cool because, I mean, I'm gonna skip around a, a bit tonight because that's just how I, um, you know, I can't help it. But the, um, I'm constantly wanting God to, to fix the way I, I feel, you know, and and make me happy so I can go out and do whatever it is that I think I I need to do and want to do to get what I want, you know. And uh, it's, it's backwards for me to say, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me see? What would you have me say, you know, right now? Um, so anyway, now, now I've got that out of the way, that was the only thing I wanted to say, so, <laughs> and, um, so, I come from, I'm, I'm not, you know, I know we don't do drunk logs here, but I, I wanted to share, I was talking to Johnny earlier on today, and there's a, there's a story I might tell in, in a little bit about, I, I come from a world of being a, a, a suicidal alcoholic, um, junkie, um, and, my, I've been sober nine years, which now, which is a miracle, and that's, you know, thanks to the grace of my higher power and these rooms and the steps, and a lot, a lot, a lot of help, you know, um, and, but there was, you know, like, 
whenever I do write my gratitude list, I put on there that I'm really grateful to be alive, and I'm really connected to that, because there was a time um, when I was, I don't know, about, I was maybe like three months sober, and I was I was bouncing in and out of rehabs at the time, trying to get sober, and if I wasn't in rehab, I was I was using and drinking, um, and just to, just to rewind even a bit more, um, the reason why I was using and drinking is because I could not be sober. It wasn't, like, I, I would go to meetings, I'd hear everybody say, oh, you know, sober is so great, and these, this program and this thing has completely changed my life, and that wasn't my experience. I would go to meetings, and and um, I just couldn't hear, like, I, I mean, I sort of believed you guys when you said that things were really good, but I, I, I didn't see how that was attainable for me. Um, and so really, the only from the ages of, uh, I think, 18 to 23 was where a lot of my um, stuff went down with regards to drugs and alcohol and trying to get sober. And um, I really wanted it, but it didn't seem possible. And so I kept on relapsing and relapsing and relapsing. Um, the actual um, time when I, when I got sober, this, this time around... Uh, I didn't think that I was going to be able to stay sober, and I got I uh, went out on a binge, um, and then I went to um, a meeting the next day, and that was December twenty third, oh three, and and uh, I haven't picked up since. Um, now, um, what I really like hearing about in uh, in these rooms is is about like alcoholism, ego, and self, and steps one, two, and three. It's a really good format for me because it, 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 it's, uh, I've been to loads and loads and loads of meetings and it was probably about five years, um, sober that I found this meeting and, and the prime time format and, uh, I, uh, I was so miserable and for the, for, for the first time in a few years I've just gotten out of a, a relationship with a, uh, uh, like pretty active alcoholic girl and you know my mind told me that it would be good for us to move in together and <laughs> see how that goes and and and, uh, and it didn't go well you know it was, it was it was really it was really tough and like you know I, I don't want to lay any blame on her because I'm I'm such an alky dude and, and like I um, you know I you know I'll tell you where my pain comes from my pain comes from self you know, self-inflicted pain, you know, my God, you know, this world and this whole deal here that I get to experience is beautiful, you know, and, uh, you know, it's it's my my self, my distorted perception, which makes it hard sometimes, you know, Um, so, you know, it was about five years that I came here and I started hearing people sharing about the disease of alcoholism, you know, and it wasn't just uh, 20 you know, say, if, you know, I've got 25, 30 minutes tonight, it wasn't just 25 minutes of, like, you know, injecting, cracking my eyeballs, and then, oh, and then I got sober, and life's great now, you know, it was, like, my experience of, like, you know, um, by the way, I never did that, I just, <laughs> yeah, um, but it, it's, it's my, um, you know, it's what, what it's, what happens when I put down the medicine, you know, what, what happens then? How's my experience, and how do I uh, how do I live in the world sober without without that stuff? And I have to tell you, like at times over the course of the years, I uh, it hasn't been graceful and it hasn't been pretty. But then there's also been like amazing periods too. Um, and uh, I uh, I guess you know I. I it's hard for me when I try and talk specifically about ego, although I know that I've definitely got one, and, and alcoholism itself in, in a specific way, because I feel like I, I'm, I'm trying to say something that is right and correct. So I'm just going to tell um, sort of my experience. And there are people out here who are really good at that stuff. You know, they're awesome at like laying it down in a really good way. And uh, so I'm, I'm just going to try my best. Um, I uh, I didn't know when I came here that what I was suffering from was untreated alcoholism. I thought um, 
there was other stuff going on, which there probably was, and but I, I didn't know that. You know, the, I like. I like 60 through 63 in the big book. It sort of tells me what my problem there is in, in, a, in a paragraph or two. It says, you know, selfishness, self-centeredness is basically the root of my problems. I'm driven by a hundred forms of fear and self-delusion. I mean, that's a lot of fear and self-delusion, you know. <laughs> and, and my problem is, is I, I can't see the light through the trees. I, I, I mean, I, I, my reality is the reality, you know. Um, and so thank you everybody here for showing me the truth you know and thank you for taking off the you know I choose to put back on these um, crap coloured glasses sometimes you know but um, I come here I do the stuff and and I get to put down those glasses and see things the way they really are you know Um, so um I guess um, I'm going to talk a bit about what happened four weeks ago, which is I went to do this course, this uh, and it was amazing. Like I went away, I went away for a week to do this this course in Arizona. It was like a, a retreat of sorts, and I said about it at my Monday night men's tag. I don't come to this meeting too often, but I go to the Monday night men's tag, um, and. Uh, it was really, really awesome. You know, the, one of the areas that I've found hard over the past four years has been um, relationships, you know, love, um, intimate relationships with uh, women, you know. And, uh, and I went, like, without getting into great detail, I went and did this thing, and it was, it was, uh, it was really cool. And I'll, I'll tell you why, because, uh, I mean, from 8.30 in the morning, it was like being back in rehab, which I sort of got used to. And, but from like 8.30 in the morning, from 4, 4.30 at night, it was just like recovery, 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 recovery. And, and uh, I started having a new experience with a higher power. And like, I mean, like, it was an outside thing. It wasn't really like a, an AA thing, but it was, a, it was like sort of 12-step base. And it was, um, and it was awesome because... I started having a, a step two experience, you know, and, you know, like, it's been told to me that I can't have step two without step one in my life, you know, so if I'm not at complete defeat, which I really felt when I went to this thing, I felt like I'm at complete defeat, I'm willing to do anything to lift this merciless obsession from me, I'm willing to do anything, you know, just show me what to do, I want to get better, I want recovery, you know, um, and... You know, drugs and alcohol haven't been there for a while. As I want recovery from my mind, and I want to live down here. You know, this this guy said a while back, um, this friend who actually was the first person I ever spoke here called Larry. He said it's a, it's a long journey from the head to the heart. You know, um, and I can hear this stuff, and I can know the literature, and I can I can read the twelve and twelve, read the big book. You know, but what, you know, if I'm not doing it, it doesn't mean anything. Like I, if I'm not applying it and practicing it, you know, if it's not down there, if it's not in, in my soul and in my heart, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to do anything, and I might even be able to come out here and sound really good, you know, um, talking about that stuff, you know, but what's it like when I go back home, you know, like, what's it look like, am I screaming and shouting, am I honking the horn, am I like stressing out over every little thing, I mean, that's no way to live for me, that's not why I got sober, you know, I, I mean, really, um, so, um, my uh, my step two experience here was that I was raised in a very, uh, you know, my parents weren't religious, but I went to boarding school at the age of nine to 15 until I got kicked out. And, and my experience with God was not a good one, you know. I was convinced I was going to hell, you know. And, uh, really, and, and that stuck with me, you know. Even though I've been coming to AA for many, many years, and like, on and off since I was 16, actually, I've been coming to AA. And, and I've heard... Everybody here, Sarah, about you get to develop your own conception of a higher power and, like, you know, it doesn't have to be the lightning bolt coming down at you and, and you're going to hell and, and it, but it's, and I can understand that up here, but to feel that down there is a different story. And when I was doing this thing, I, I don't cry that much, you know, and even though I feel like I'm getting a bit emotional tonight, I don't, I don't cry that much. And so I was sitting in this, in this group with a bunch of other guys and, and, um, I was reading this letter, um, to my inner child. So, like, and, and it was, and this is totally not 
AA stuff, so but this is just my experience, and like, and, I, and it was good because like what it did for me was it is it um, gave me um, a new relationship with a higher power, like doing that, which is awesome, and I never would have thought that. And what I think is what happened there is I feel like my mind cracked open just enough to have this experience that I uh, had this experience and to connect on a deeper level. You know, and I've heard Ron talk about it before, but he talks about going inside and, and the power of being inside. And I've always looked outside for it, you know. I've, uh, I've always imagined um, a dude sitting on a cloud, you know, that's like doing stuff, you know. And instead, <laughs> I felt connected to my soul, you know. Like, wow. Like, and I have to say, like, through my, you know, they say that alcoholism will steal my soul without my consent and it's so true but when I first came here especially when I first came here I felt like a soul of zombie you know like I was walking and there was blood pumping through the veins but there was there was nothing there you know um, so lost just so lost um, and um, if you're new like welcome this is so awesome this whole deal you know um, but also like I don't know like it's um Bill was sharing a couple of weeks ago about what I really like about when he says is he talks a lot about listening and that's something that I learned to do in this room was was to listen. Um, I imagine some of you, and this isn't a judgment because I do it as well, but I imagine some of you might be thinking about what's happening after tonight's meeting, what are you going to do, like how's work coming along, what's my boyfriend, girlfriend up to right now, you know, like... Or, or something like that, and it's and it's like my alcoholism desperately wants to take me out of the moment, you know. And when I'm when I'm here in the moment, um, I get to be with my high power, and I get to be present, um, and that's hard. And and you know the other thing which I really like hearing is that this is a, a practice, you know. So I get to practice it, and I don't have to be perfect at it because man, am I hard on myself, you know? Really, really hard on myself, and like I want to. You know, like I, when I've shared before at meetings, it's tempting to like share about all the bad stuff that I'm doing and how I'm not, how I'm falling short and how I'm not um, living up to what I, where I think I should be with nine years sober. And that's all, you know, it's, for lack of a better word, yes, you know, um, it, it's not true. Um, you know, I'm a child of God, is, is the fact. Um, and I've been given a gift, um, not just of life, but of freedom from you know, active alcoholism, I've got a chance, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's really, really, really special. Um, a part of my alcoholism, a part of my disease is uh, I've got a, a forgetter and I've got an eraser man um, in my head, so I'll hear good stuff <laughs> and the little guy will come up after I've heard the good stuff and after I've left the meeting and he'll literally just rub it all off, you know, <laughs> and the bad information will come back in again, you know, and self you know, the authority for my life, you know, will will come back in and I'll be running the show again. And uh, I like that, what they say in the big book, the, or the 12 and 12, the pain is a touchstone of spiritual growth, because it's so true. Like, I, that pain's very real, you know. And I've come up with ways to escape the pain. Um, and they're not very healthy, some of them, you know. Um <laughs> And, and they, they involve self-destruction a lot, you know. And I think that, you know, oh, I'll try anything to get away from, from the self-inflicted pain. An experience I had the other night, actually, was um, I was in bed. I've, I've actually been struggling with a bit of insomnia lately, and so I was, I, was, uh, I was in bed, and I couldn't fall asleep. I went to bed at midnight. I was up to about 1.32, maybe. And... Um, Around 1.30, I, uh, somebody, somebody said something which made me think that I should talk to my higher power. And what I said to my higher power was, um, um, God, can you help me sit with what I'm going through right now? Can you help me not want to escape for anything? Can you help me be present for the pain I'm feeling right now? Um, I fell asleep like a baby. <laughs> you know, that's like... That doesn't happen that much. Like, I, 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 like, well, I mean, like, I'm, I, normally, like I say, God, help me for stay home for, you know, and, and, and instead I just say, can you help me be present through what I'm going through right now? And boom, lights out. So, 
That's cool, right? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Little step to experience. Um, and uh, I don't know. Like I, I've got a great sponsor, and he's got a really cool sponsor, and I've got a couple of sponsees, and we try and stay in this thing together. They call me, I call him. You know, um, my temptation is even with my sponsors just to tell him, you know, um, that things are fine. You know, things are good, and I don't want to be honest with him because I don't want him to tell me to do something that I don't want to do. You know, <laughs> and so. I just, you know, I just, I just gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. You know, when I first got sober, I think that's the thing that saved my bacon was, was that I, um, I got honest with somebody about who I was and, and how I felt. You know, and, and the truth is, is I was so uncomfortable in my own skin and so ashamed of myself, and uh, I carried around so much shame. And, and, and uh, that's something that I'm still working on today. Is just like letting go of the shame, and I find that. The deeper I go into this, the better that gets, you know. Um, and so really, like, I, I like it when people have said to me before, what have you got to lose, man? You know, what have you got to lose if you really go for this right now? You know, if you dive into the steps, if you, if you, if you, if you surrender and really go for this, like a, a drowning man would a, a life preserver if he's about to drown, you know. Um, and um, what have I got to lose? Am I going to become... Uh, AA robot lemming, you know, walking around, or or or, or am I going to discover who I truly am? You know, my head tells me, you know, nah, nah, don't do it, don't do it. You're happy being miserable. You're happy being in pain. Um, um, there's there's stuff you need and you want. And trust me, if you go with this AA cult, you won't get it, dude. You know, <laughs> and uh, that's not the truth. You know, Randy, my grand sponsor, was telling me the other day. That what's promised to me here is a life beyond my wildest dreams, you know. Um, so what is that? Well, I mean, I know what my wildest dreams are, but what's what's beyond that, you know? And I guess it's like peace of mind and serenity and that stuff, you know. I mean, that's what I was always looking for in, in drugs and alcohol. Is uh, I was looking for a connection, and I was looking to feel okay. Um, and that's that's what I want now. You know, I feel feel connected being up here tonight. Um, I uh, I'm doing I'm doing like I don't know. Like, ever since I got back from that retreat, I've I've been doing stuff a little bit differently. Um, <coughs> I've been trying to go for this thing more. Um, time I've noticed doesn't treat my alcoholism, and I've heard that here before. So that's not something that I just came up with. Um, it's uh, a daily reprieve based on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. And when I wake up in the morning, my spiritual condition isn't that important to me. I want to do emails. I want to get going. I want to, I want to, you know, work and get coffee and 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 get get the day going. You know, um, that's I guess where my ego lives. Is that little ego, infantile ego, is always in a rush you know, to get somewhere and do something, and and so, um, through my experience, the pain of not going for this thing has pushed me into a position where I've got two ways to go, you know, I can uh, move towards the slow, alcoholic, miserable death, or pick up these spiritual tools and go towards the light, you know, um, and, uh, that's a practice too for me, you know, like, um, I opt sometimes to go for the slow, alcoholic, painful, miserable death. And thank God that it gets too painful. I'm like, ah, and I like go back into the program, you know, and thank God there's a program here, right? You know, like, <laughs> I guarantee you I'd be in an insane asylum, um, jail or dead, you know. Most likely in an insane asylum, though. So, um, <laughs> I've got some great friends in this room, you know. And uh, my friendships, I think, today are based on, like, honesty and spirituality. And, like, I feel like the friends that I've got in my life who mean a lot to me. I, I, I sort of imagine a, a boat and we're all sort of rowing and we're all sort of going in the same direction. And every now and then somebody pops out, takes a dip, and then gets back in the boat again and, <laughs> and back on, you know. And, uh... 
I'm very, very grateful for the life I have today, you know, and, and the painful thing about my disease is uh, it'll try and get me um, to look at all the bad stuff, you know, my, my alcoholism is very focused on negative stuff, um, and uh, that's insanity, that is such insanity, I've got the most wonderful life, and I've got the most wonderful people in my life, I've got blood pumping through the veins, you know, and I've got this high power, and, 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 and Ron, on the way in, pointed out the grass, I didn't even see the grass, you know, thank you Ron, you know, there's like really green grass outside the church, you know, um, and I just, yeah, I don't know, um, I think, uh, you know, when I said before, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into the, the, the guts of this story because it's really ugly, but I really wanted to check out at one point, you know, like I really wanted to kill myself and I made a really good stab and uh, for a few years I was really embarrassed to tell people that it was when I was sober, this was about, um, I'd say about 11 years ago when I was trying to get sober and I, and I got sober and I was in a halfway house and, and I tried to kill myself and uh, it wasn't a cry for help. I, I, maybe it was, I don't know, I don't, didn't feel like, I wanted to check out, you know, and the three days before I did, made the decision, I, uh, I felt peace, because I knew that it was all going to be over soon, um, and I went out, made a really good stab at it, um, and I survived, and, um, after that point, I've, I've wanted to live ever since, but, you know, some days today, where I think, you know, I'm alive, I've got this life, and, and I get very emotional because I, I think how close it was to me almost not being there, you know, and not getting to experience what I'm experiencing now, and not having the chance to have a great life, you know, like, I was convinced that there was no light at the end of the tunnel, um, and I've been feeling that way for a few years, um, so, you know, um, I think that's it, and I, I, I hope I'm not dreaming, I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up anyway, but like, I, I, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I'm quite tired today, I didn't sleep very well last night, but it's, thank you for having me out, it's, I, I, I really love AA, you know, and I love my life when I'm connected to a higher power and I'm in this program, and I hate my life when I'm in my alcoholism, you know, and, and that's insanity, and I, you know, this, I know I've talked about step two a few times, um, tonight, but came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. I mean, I have to see that I'm insane, you know, and, and, and this coming to believe is, is, you know, right now, right? So, and I just, I just know some of the things which I'm insane about, you know, I don't know the whole enchilada right now, you know, there's probably stuff that I'm really insane about that I'm not aware of, but, I mean, I guess that's why it says in the, in the format here, you know, um, deepen my awareness of what I'm up against, because um, it's huge, this thing, it's massive, and the lies are extensive, you know, and the lies that come from up here, you know, so, uh, thank you, Clemmy, sir. Right, uh, we will now um, have... Um, sharing and or questions and answers if anybody wants to share or ask a question. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Jeffrey. It's nice to be here. My primetime family. Um, I came here in 2002 and uh, a friend of mine started a primetime meeting up north and it's thriving. It's got like 60 people every week and so I'm really grateful I found God in this very room. 2002, a lot of the guys are still here from then, um, and I, in my meditation, I think it was yesterday, it came to me that, like, uh, previously I used to judge people by the worst thing they'd ever done. Like, if I'd known someone for 10 years and I saw them, that's what my mind went to right away. Not all the wonderful stuff that had happened in my life regarding them, but the worst things. And... Uh, that's bad enough, but I also did that myself. You know, in, in, in my self-view previously, and 
this kind of stuff happened mostly below the level of consciousness. I don't didn't really know why I hated you or why I didn't like you or why I you know found it very difficult to be near you. But that was it. It was like you know a negative crap glass, as Daniel put. Um, so over my years of drinking and drugging, I built a character. Uh, I didn't know I was doing that. But when I'm out in this world talking to you and interacting with you and, you know, going to the grocery store and driving a car, something's operating. Something is acting. And what it is in untreated alcoholism is the character I built over all those years of drinking and drugging. And we have an expression we really like up north. And I put it on the Facebook group, so maybe one of you, some of you guys have heard it. We borrowed it from George Carlin, and it says, uh, just because you got the monkey off your back doesn't mean the circus has left town. <laughs> so, you know, I stopped drinking and drugging and uh, thought that everything would be okay, and it was for like a year or so until things just... This uh, character I built would become predominant again, and the novelty of, uh, you know, not punching people over parking spaces and you know, throwing up inappropriately was gone. So uh, I couldn't fix what was broken in step two with what was already broken. I had to go to a power greater than myself and uh, really turn over my thought life with him as I was taught in this very room, you know, God, please come and heal me of this obsessive mind, this self-talking, this thing that just focuses on everything that's wrong around me when there's so much right so all I could say is, you know, I'm really grateful to be here. It's nice to visit, uh, you know, my previous home group. Tony Z is my primetime sponsor. He's not here. Uh, he's crazy, too. So <laughs> it's really great to see you all. Dean, so an alcoholic. Um, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to come up here and express how grateful I am for what I heard from you today, um, are we really related to everything that you said and um really glad that I'm here. Um I am in so much gratitude. Uh I uh would have around a month right now, but I relapsed so back to a week and um I have been, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do and God has been putting in my life so many things that, like, I haven't known how to ask for, you know, like appraisal from my family and, um, you know, my, my dad's health and uh, an empty dance studio across the street from my house. And... Um, you know, like, things that while I was in my addiction, I would have never and didn't. I just completely, you know, I let all of those things go out of my mind, and they weren't important, and I didn't think I deserved them. And I can stand here right now, you know, um, for the first time in a long time and say that I'm sober for me. And... It's a really powerful feeling, and um, it's just, like, it's mind-blowing. Like, it's, it's really, it's really mind-blowing, because I've been, around, I've been around the room since I was 15 years old, and I, and I've never wanted it. I've never wanted it, and I want it so badly. I want to change. I want to be the person that I've always wanted to be. You know, I, I have dreams, and I feel like I deserve them now. Like, I actually feel like I deserve things, and I feel like I actually have a purpose, you know, and I feel like I'm here to help, you know, I'm here to be helped and just all circle and the universe, and, you know, I, I'm just so happy, and it's just overwhelming, and I... It's, it's it's hard too because I'm not used to feeling happy and I feel like I miss the misery almost like misery is my friend and 
I'm very, very, very accustomed to it, and it's been there for a long time. It's comforted me, and I just, I don't really know how to be happy. It's not, it's practice, you know, practice just like you said, and I'm still practicing this new emotion that I've been having lately. Um, it almost feels like anxiety because I don't, I'm not used to it, you know. But um, I am so grateful, and I thank God every day, and um, just uh, thank all of you, and um, I'm glad this meeting is here. Thank you for letting me share. Hi, my name's Bonnie, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, And, um... Listening to like what it what you and and what other people were talking about, it seems as though that like when she went talking about misery and our malady of being unhappy and uncomfortable, it usually for for me and what I've read in, in the big book comes from a place of like managing, and I feel as though that um, if I do things a certain way and if I'm doing it the right way and my intention becomes intensely directed in managing my life and therefore it's leading into the lives of others and then I'm when you're not acting the way that my plan is going it, it then things start becoming really uncomfortable and um, and I find in the morning uh, I allow myself to check my emails um, drink a cup of coffee and have a cigarette and I get that out of the way and then I can sit down and I can start and I can do a meditation instead of like trying to like be really regimented and I have to do it this way otherwise it's the wrong way and um, one of the my prayers my meditation is is trying to understand what uh, love and joy are in my life and when I start going into that place, when I take that into my life and I go into the workplace or I go into my relationships, um, I find that I'm, I'm having less difficulty in my life because my, my desires and my needs become less. And I find that, um, I, I don't require as much when I'm coming from more of a place inside of me. And it's interesting that, you know, the creative intelligence, I like to call him God just because it's, I, it's how I learned about the universe. And, um, you know, I think a few people got it wrong when they decided that, like, an infinite intelligence would have uh, things like jealousy or liking somebody more than another you know it just it does it just doesn't go along but I do real I have had uh, moments where I am coming from a place of love and my experience in life shifts and my disappointments in others my uh, uh, level of anxiety reduces and I I start finding that I can breathe and um, I, I, I'm just not putting pressure on myself or and I'm not putting pressure on others and I, I feel as though that I can uh, <coughs> exist in humanity in a, in a much more graceful relaxed easier way thanks for having sharing I'm Bobby. I'm an alcoholic. Bobby. I have to say, I've never shared in front of a group this big, so uh, bear with me. Um, I want to share something that has taken place in my life, and it happened just two weeks ago. I've been sober now, coming up to 13 years, and this past year has been 
I've been emotionally the worst. I have felt miserable. Everything has been wrong. Everything I've done has been wrong. And it's just been tearing me apart, and I've just been an emotional wreck. And my, my ego is like looking at all the negative that is out there, every single thing. And, a, and two weeks ago, I was, I've been coming to a lot of meetings. I've been doing a lot of praying. I have been reading many books. I've been reading all our books. I've been doing all these things. And I've been doing tons of it. And I've been doing more than I have in years. And I was sitting there, and it dawned on me, and it went, I have a mind. I'm in control of my mind. God gave me dominion over my world. My world is between my ears. I have control over that. It has been controlling me my whole life. My mind has been telling me what to do. This is what I think. My mind has been in charge. It has done everything. It has, it has lost businesses for me. It has, it's, it's, it's done everything that I don't need to get into. We all know what's happened to us. Um, but I sat there and went, oh my God, I have control over my mind. It's me that needs to tell it what to do. And it's sitting there going, da 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 you know, you need to like, Get rid of your car. Quit your job. You know, get rid of her. Do, you know, just going on and doing all this stuff. You know, tell your mom you don't want to take care of her anymore. No, 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 no. Let's just get that one out of here. You know, it's just going on. You know, and I'm like going, stop. I control you. You shut up. And I told it to shut up. And I told my ego to shut up finally. After 62 years of life, I told it to shut up. So that was on a Tuesday. The following Wednesday... The, this thing was going, he found me out. He found me out. And then it went crazy. It just was like jabbering about everything. You know, like, I'm going to like just, and it's just on and on. And it will not shut up now. It will not shut up. I found it out. It's cornered. It doesn't know what to do except for create misery. And I have to constantly now sit here and go, God, if I bring God into my life and then put my life or God over my brain and I'm just say, okay, I control you. You now can give me directions and you can do some mathematical equations and now you can do some, uh, you can be artistic and you can make some plans, but I control you with God's help in that. And that has happened to me, but I have to tell you that since it's been found out, it is angry. <laughs> Angry. So, anyway, thank you. I had to share, and I, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Johnny B., tell us the truth. I will tell you the truth as far as I know. My name is Johnny Brenner. I'm an alcoholic. Uh, welcome to anybody who's new. Uh, thanks. Daniel, I, uh, I adore you, and uh, every time we talk, I, I'm happier, and uh, I love having you in my life. It's good to see Jeffrey here at our meeting. And that was a very powerful thing you just shared for me, uh, because what we're talking about here is consciousness. We're talking about consciousness, and that's what's promised here. In step 11, the culmination of these steps is really not 12, but 11, <coughs> which allows me to do 12. So, what are we doing here? Why are we coming here? Because, you know, Daniel can get up and talk about the program. I, I, we can get up here and talk about an apple and what it's like to look at an apple and to examine the apple and I can explain to you it's tart and what it tastes like but really we all have to go grab an apple and start biting it and eat the apple otherwise it's just some story about some piece of fruit <laughs> uh, I had to go for this thing for my life because I couldn't kill myself and I couldn't live with, it, with or without booze and it took me many years of being dry to to do that, and 
my relationship with God, which is the God is the change agent. The whole complete defeat that we're looking at here in step one really becomes total in step six. It's total defeat. I can't possibly change anything about me. It's, it's over. It's completely failed. I can tell my mind maybe once, shut up. And what does it do? It's going to learn everything that I learn. It's going to follow me around. It's going to start dragging me in another direction. It's going to come up from the basement and pull me in another way. So my only job is to... The steps are nested. They, they actually shouldn't be up and down like that. They're nested. You know what I mean? One, two, three, four, because it doesn't work. It only works if one is there in the center and then two. And now I can start to see conscious, I get to see what my mind did. And that's where it started for me. Really started at seven years drive was to listen to my mind and to hear it. And it's a horribly, horribly painful <laughs> experience to start to do. But the only way out is through. Or I can just stay in everlasting ignorance. And uh, some people, that's the path. So I don't know. I'm so grateful. Like, I read a lot of outside literature and uh I'm reading this book this guy's boiled it down to nothing everybody lives I live we live in a paradigm where the universe is the existence universe is existence and that's a tough place to be because everything's scary and wrong and I don't know but when we switch to exactly what he just said, this consciousness paradigm, where the, the matrix, the most important thing is that I am, that I am conscious, that I have awareness of who I am, and maybe the universe doesn't even exist, but I, because I can't prove or disprove it, but I can prove that I am. And when I start there, I get separation. It turns out that the fish I would always, was always trying to catch is me. That God, that I used to be outside, is inside, and I'm just a drop. That you guys are all drops. We're all drops in the ocean. We are, I, God, I am to God what a drop of water is to the ocean, and I need you guys. I need the other drops to be whole. So I love you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, hi, my name's Emily, alcoholic, and um, I just, not to cross talk or anything, but I really want to say thank you so much for sharing your story. I relate so much to it, you know. Um, I've been in the program for 19 years. I've had four and have not been able to get a year since, and um, I found a sponsor who happened to be in prime time. And when I come here, I feel no judgment. I feel like, God, what have I been doing all this time, going to all these other places, you know? And um, I have a sponsor who is just perfect for me. She will not deal with my um, yes or lagging on step work. So now that I uh, did do my step work on time, we're going back to there is a solution. Um, I just really want to say, when you said, uh, suicidal, I have, uh, been in so many treatment centers, so many transitional living, so many separate living, so many detoxes, and, um, I was a hope to die drug addict, and no matter what I did, it didn't matter. And, um... Finally, after being like 5150, that really scary place, I stopped because I saw these people that tried to kill themselves and it didn't work. And they were like paralyzed. It was very intense. And then one other thing, and I just got teary eyed for some weird reason when you talked about it. Um, for you said something about, um, you have to excuse me, my brain cells are still trying to work. Um, you said something hopeless. Like, I don't, 
like at one point of your story you said something about hopelessness and how you feel now and I like tears start forming in my eyes. Um, uh, you know, I just I have felt so hopeless um for such a long time. And then finally found that through therapy, which is something I need to do, and through living this amazing sober living, which I never say that, um, it's very spiritual. So I have, like, a spiritual advisor. I have my sponsor, and then I've got my therapist who I work very hard with. Those three things, and trying to be of any service I can, even though I've got, like, two months a little over at the moment um, and trying to humble myself to be a newcomer is really hard because my ego does not want that. I'm like, don't you know? I've been around this program not 18, 19 years, you know, but obviously I know nothing. So I just, I really want to say thank you. And I was like laughing because I related to so much of what you said. You're really awesome. Thank you. My name is Courtney. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, so I have a question for Daniel or for anybody because I don't know where else to ask it. Um, so, you know, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, okay, so that happened. And you talked a lot about st- <laughs> Yeah, that happened quick. Okay, you seem to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And I have a really strong connection to my higher power. And I read a lot of spiritual literature, both AA and outside. Um, I can see my ego, and I can be in the present moment, and uh, I do a lot of gratitude stuff. And like I can, I I'm not somebody who dwells like in the negative and in the sad. And so we go through and we clean house and we walk through all the stuff of our past. Well, I have a gem right now. I have something really uncomfortable that I'm walking through, and I'm using all of these spiritual principles, and I'm like. But I know, I have a really deep knowing that everything is going to be okay. You know, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. I'm present. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I'm getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And what I'm, an, what I'm asking somebody is maybe, you know, this power that I believe in, how... What's happening is I have an inability right now to experience this emotion. You know, I'm using spiritual principles to like over to overcome it, and I don't know how to just like let it happen. I don't know how to feel it. So if anybody has experienced that, because I can't keep being like everything's okay, because it's not. Anyway, thank you. I just want to say one thing on that, and then, and then I'm going to bring Ron G up here. Uh, but I, I thank you a lot for sharing that, and I, I don't know if this is relates to it at all, but I had an experience. Um, my sponsor, Matthew, um, and actually this, this therapist, and, 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 and has, has told me that like, I, I'm a runner. Like, I'm a runner, and I'll use anything to not deal... I mean, Johnny just said it, you know, the only way out is through, you know, and, and for me, like, I, I, lately my prayer has been, can you help me sit with it, can you help me be present for this pain or whatever it is, and I don't know if that directly answers your question, but that's what I, that's my prayer to my higher power, is, is, because I'll, I, I, feelings and tough stuff, I mean, like, I want stuff to be perfect, I'm an alcoholic addict, you know, I want me to be floating on a pink cloud 24-7, you know, I mean, that's how it should be, right? You know, and and that's just the old, uh, you know, the mind doing its thing again, you know, um, wow. So, Ron, do you want to, yeah. Hi, my name is Ron, I am an alcoholic. Um... For me, and that's that's the only thing I can really talk about. Um, and I've had issues in my life that just it just didn't seem like I could find an answer with God. I did all of my 
prayers and my meditation, and I was still angry, and I was still upset. And I, I've, I've read the literature, too, and I know for a fact that all of my upset has to do with me. I create it all. There isn't any upset at all that comes from God. God has nothing to be upset about. And I know that the outside world has absolutely no character of its own whatsoever. The only character it has is the character that I give it by my thinking and my thought. So uh, whether my, my family is good or bad, whether my car is good or bad, whether my job is good or bad, my relationship, it, it's all a function of my thinking, except I've got a broken thinker. I don't think the good purpose. I don't know how to do that. I can I can will it as much as I try to will it, but it just doesn't work. I'm a neurotic, and I go back to all those neurotic thoughts over and over again. So part of the inventory is that I have to let go of all of my grievances, all of my upsets, and I have to give them to God. If I am in a place of upset at all, it's something that I have not given up. It can't be anything else. Uh, it's me telling God and the universe that you're screwing up, you don't know what you're doing, and you're not doing things according to my script. In, in the big book, it talks about being the director, playing the director. And if only the actors would do what I say, I would be perfectly okay. Only it doesn't work that way. So I have to go within... And I have to I have to look at my non-acceptance of what is and why I can't be in complete acceptance. Because God is not confused. God does know what God is doing. The world is having a great day today. God in the universe is doing just fine. If I'm not having a good day, I need help from God to see what I need to let go of because it's my stuff, all of it. There just isn't any other way. And that's why, that's why we have this, this entire program, because the entire program delivers a relationship with God. It produces a psychic change. I cannot do this stuff and remain the same person. It doesn't work. Okay? I cannot be the same person and, and do these steps honestly. This, this program is going to change me, this program and God. And, and, you know, we all have issues, but there are solutions, and, and that solution comes from a power greater than myself. Thank you. Hi, I'm Wendy. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Wendy. And, Courtney, I don't know if this is going to help you or not, but um, I was thinking about this before you even shared. And you had talked about complete defeat, you know. And the complete defeat, I always forget that we have to hit complete defeat before we can really have that step two experience. And, you know, I, I, I'm a very, very busy person. I have a lot going on in my life all the time. And I usually function at a pretty high level and a pretty fast pace. And... You know, it's hard and it gets stressful, but I don't usually get too upset about it. But right now, there's a couple of things going on that I'm, again, trying to manage, you know. And it's because I've done everything I can do, and now I have to wait for an answer, and it might take some time, and I'm not comfortable in waiting for that answer. So, you know, I'm, I go back to trying to manage it and try to find the answers, and, and I get into a really uncomfortable place with that. And... um you know, I'm trying to use the tools, right? I keep going, okay, God, you know, I know you can help me let go, and, you know, I want to give this to you. I don't want to, you know, manage this. Please take this problem from me. And, you know, trying to use the tools and and trying, as Emmett Fox says, you know, when it's like the, a negative thought comes on and it lands like a burning ember on my sleeve, right? And I want to brush the ember off before it burns me. And 
But the thing is, is that it's already burned me. It's already gone into my subconscious and it's there. So if I try to just apply these tools and ask for God's help, it's not really working, you know? I keep taking it back and taking it back. And you reminded me again tonight that I can't just go right into step two and step three. I have to be in a step one first. I have to hit that bottom with it. I have to be in a complete surrender. And sometimes that takes feeling the uncomfortable feelings and getting into a lot of pain. You know, pain is the touchstone of our recovery and it's because through that pain is where we can let go and have a surrender and then turn it over and you know so that's where I'm at right now it's like I'm struggling with this problem and I know now because I've been reminded one more time that I'm going to have to feel it until I'm done feeling it I'm going to have to feel that pain and then let it go and you know Courtney maybe that's the same with you you're in a place where you know something's hurting and it's when you hit that complete defeat with it that you'll be able to turn it over again so I always have to remember, step one comes before step two. Hey, everybody. I'm Noel. I'm an alcoholic. I'm uh, sober by God's grace. Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, I started to wonder, though, you know, if you were going to call some black people up. <laughs> Listen, uh, I say, <laughs> Listen, I say that. I say that as a joke, honestly. We are not a glum lot, right? Look, this guy is looking at me like... <laughs> Where is he going with that? Right? Oh, listen, I, I'm here. I'm visiting. I used to come to this meeting. I love this meeting. I am I am a hardcore prime time. Woo, sign me up. Um, but when I stopped doing it, it stopped working. It's just that simple. But I, I live in Atlanta now, so I'm visiting. And um, and, and I say we're not a glum lot because, you know, I jokingly, um, inevitably, I always bring something back to the black and white thing in a, in a meeting. So my nickname is Black now. I've been called worse. But the, the, the bottom line is, you know, in, in the 12 and 12, it tells me, I really enjoy just sharing everybody else. So it tells me, it says, upon entering AA, the fallacy of my defiance was revealed. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I didn't know what that meant when I got it. I really didn't. I didn't. I didn't know I was a defined character. You know, but somebody said you have a problem, and I say no. You got a problem with me having a problem. I don't have a problem. You know, and I can use that philosophy like Ron just said, where no, I, I'm gonna give it a meaning and call it a problem, but it's not really a problem. My problem is I resist what is, and then I'll label the resistance, attach an identity to it, derive a sense of identity from it, and then. Try Try to explain my life away. You know, I, I do that. I, really, I do that. I'm a, I can do that with the best of them. I really can. Matter of fact, the book tells me that I love to philosophically comfort myself. And 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 man, I got some logic. You know, but I don't. You know what I mean? I never knew that all the logic I have just kept feeding my defiance. Because I never knew defiance operated. Somebody mentioned it. I think it was you below the level of consciousness. And I certainly never knew what consciousness was. But I thought I did. You know, I'm an intellect. I, I know some stuff. And, and I'm a musician. And I've traveled all over the world. And I've talked to people all over the world. And I've read all of the books. And, and I know. And I thought that knowing equated to better. And it just doesn't. And you said that really eloquently. You know, so um, it says at no time had I asked what God's will was for me. Instead, I had been telling him what it ought to be. You know, God, most of my life I've been trying to do your will. Why don't you just consider doing my will for change? <laughs> just this one time, maybe just this one time. And, and let, let's see how that works out. You know, Casey, I know you guys know Casey. So I always say, you know, money can't buy you happiness, but it can sure buy me a nice Corvette to ride around and look for it in. And I wanted to try that formula. As a matter of fact, I did. But it it just never worked. But I do have a question for you. I am so happy to be back in this room, and, and boy, they got some new faces in this room. All right? Oh my God, there's there's a lot of new faces. Craig, that's that's an old face. But uh, <laughs> I don't mean like old in age, but Craig, man, I love this guy. Paul, oh my God, Miss Susie, you're not old. You're the, Miss Susie's not old. She never looks old. She still looks the same. Um, but you know, it says I never asked. What God's will was for me. And the question I have for you, and I, I talked to Ron about this recently, but I want your input because you shared some really good stuff that was, that was relevant to the way my mind works. How do you tell the difference? It may be a little philosophical, maybe even a little intellectual, but, but 
just from your heart, from your own experience, how do you tell the difference between God's voice and your mind? Because I got a mind that'll tell me this is God talking to me, and and you know it'll hide behind that whole all all the stuff I think I know. And when I really get down to brass tacks, where the rubber meets the roads, and you know what gets with the fan, and it blows it all over the place, where do I stand? Thanks for letting me share. I'm going to grab a book for one sec. It's not out there right now, but I'm going to paraphrase it and get it completely wrong. But thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for sharing that. I, uh, my grand sponsor often says at the end of, we have a meeting every Thursday night, and he often says, you know, guys, I feel really connected when I'm in an AA meeting, and I feel really in the light and in the truth, and I'm hearing people share honestly, and it's great. And, and, and he says, you know, like, when, when you walk out the door tonight, ask your higher power which way to go when you're driving. I'm like, Randy, that doesn't make any sense. I know, I know, I know which way to go. I know how to get home. You know? And uh, and I tried it out one time. And you know, my experience was to turn left, which is the way I normally go. But I gave it a shot, you know. And it was a small experience, but I, I uh, there's nothing really profound behind that, so I apologise for that. But like, I tried it, you know. And and my um. The thing that we were reading in that group the other day in, in, in the meeting was a bit at the end of step three in the 12 and 12, where it talks about that. Because somebody in the meeting asked that question, like, how do I know if it's me calling the shots or if it's God, you know, if it's my higher power? And everybody in the meeting was like, oh, well, that's the million dollar question, you know, and like, and, and then it, and then we read it like the next minute, you know, in the paragraph, and it and it and it said and, and something about and and then going to God's will and 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 to the to the principles embodied in in, in the steps into these spiritual principles, and and that's my interpretation of God's will right now is these principles. If I if I if I want to know um, what to do, I, I've got to I've got to get stuck into applying some of these principles in, in my in my in my life and when it's scary for me asking God what would you have me do because that means maybe I'm not going to get what I think I want you know <laughs> and I want what I want man you know I want the Corvette you know so I can go out and find happiness you know <laughs> and, and and you know I, I, I had the experience of getting a nice car last year and, and, and you know it wasn't like that peaceful spiritual happiness it was like the excited sort of hey check out this car you know and it was like you know like sort of like a manic sort of thing it wasn't like peaceful serene like I, I, I love you and what can I do for you and like <laughs> You know, I was like, hey, check, check, check me out. You know, but I did it in a subtle way, you know. So I wasn't obvious about it, right, you know. So was, but anyway, my disease is so sneaky, you know, and it's scary. It's scary for me to say, well, what would you have me do, you know. And there's, you know, there's the, there's the petition and there's the, 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 the action, you know. And so the more that I can do, the more practice, you know. I, I don't know if that answers your question, man. All right. And did you want to say? All right. Hi, Michelle, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Thank you so much for your um, share. It was beautiful. I loved uh, so much of what you shared. Um, and all the shares that I've heard tonight are so based in solution. And I, I absolutely love that today, that we have a solution. Um, I just was um, at a conference that was, you know, um, four days long, and it was really stressful, but there were meetings. Two times a week, two times in the day, actually there, and I did get to one of them. And then ironically, the theme was um, being in the moment, being present. I love what you shared about what you're doing and how you experience from from applying that in your life. Um, so, um, I was actually downloading on Google, you know, because I get creative. Because normally I do a guided meditation in the mornings every morning, but I'm not at home. I don't have my tools, <laughs> so I was like, okay, what can I? 
And I uh, Googled an 11 step, and it was beautiful. And, it was, and I got to hear the guided meditation instead of leave it, you know. It was kind of really cool. So I get creative when I travel today. And um, But one of the things I did, and I want to talk about it from an experience, like I love to speak as a matter of fact. I could talk all day about a matter of fact about the steps, about, you know, the two parts of step one and why that's so profound and powerful to, you know, acknowledge and, and have experience with and discuss with our sponsors. But more importantly, how do I... I apply that to my life. So I was thinking, what have I done that, you know, is about surrender in my life today? And so the other day I was driving about downtown and we were in San Diego and I didn't know where I am, which sometimes I don't like to experience. <laughs> and I um, was with a group of people and there were two people in the back and my front girlfriend who were all in recovery. And um, I found myself really restless and irritable and discontent because they were not Googling where their hotel was and I needed to drop them off. And how couldn't they know that they should know that? <laughs> That's kind of how I felt. And uh, so I knew that I also was completely exhausted. So I was at a halt for sure. And but uh, the, 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 the tired part. And um, I definitely um, was pushing on. But I, but I could see the shift in the way I was really irritable about it and, and judgmental, you know. And um, um, and um, I found myself at a light, and um, and also even I even like said something that was kind of like really kind of kind of snappy, you know. It's just not this itself. It's not from a God-centered place. And um, I don't like myself today when I'm like that. But the cool thing is like I can shift and go, okay, you know, like, what do you have me do? What do you have me do? And um, I didn't necessarily ask that, but I found myself today, I like intuitively knew to turn to my friend, I stopped the car at the light, I said, lovingly, can you drive the car? <laughs> and I got out of the car, and I let her drive that car, and you know, and it didn't have to like be, because I was like running the show, like I was in, you know, that kind of place, and so, it's so, I'm so grateful that I get I get that I'm not okay that way today. I get that I can be an example of loving, you know, and I can surrender at any given moment, turn it over and go, you know what, God, you know, just do your thing. Like, and it was just so freeing, you know, and I just got to like physically get into the other side of the car and just be, you know, relaxed and not have to try to figure it out or be stressed about other people, you know, and we found our way back. And, you know, I got to write a 10-step that morning. I text one actually to my sponsor. And she's like, you know, don't you get so Because I didn't like that my friend said, shut up. <laughs> she's like, you know, don't you so seriously. And I was like, I had to get to make amends for my part. And she didn't have to make amends back. That's okay. Actually, I felt really good about, you know, my who I be today in doing that. And that's like Michelle practicing the steps today. And I get more space for me to reside in the loving. You know, and I, I love what someone, someone shared about, like, that – the nest and kind of, I like, because I like the analogy of expanding outward. I like to feel myself and my living expanding outward, omnipresent. And that's, you know, I don't know, it's just such a gift to be here with you guys. I just moved to the area, so this is a newer meeting. I actually listened to a primetime meeting my girlfriend had gave me on the way back in the car with my friend on the way here, and it's just, like, I can, I, I can receive more. It's not enough. It's always more. It's, it's so awesome. I mean, more in the way of hearing the message of solution recovery. You know, I just, like, can't get it. I am in love with Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, I just am grateful you guys are here tonight in this meeting on a Saturday night so that we can all share in the solution. Two minutes. My name's Paul. I'm going to call And I'm going to talk about pausing, too. So. No, I, I like two things I heard that were great. Was what Johnny said. That, thank you, Johnny. I never heard it put that way because... My sponsor told me that the steps are in a logical order for him. And then that gal we talked about the, the importance of step one first. I forget who that was, but thank you. Because, uh, you know, that's what always what I try to do. I try to avoid feeling what I'm feeling. And I want to get through the steps quick because I was tired. you got to work steps. You know? uh, and uh, I've become a human doing because i got to get it done, don't you know? Because you know, I don't know how to be a human being, you know. And so I forget about the pause. You know, and I forget that I'm powerless and my life's unmanageable. And I'm going to have to sit with that and see what that feels like and sit with that and actually have that be who I am because that's where I am. You know, and when I can sit there, then I can ask a power greater than myself to be there. And it's already present. It's breathing my breath and beating my heart right now. But, of course, I'm caught up in my head, so I can't. But as I, as I accept that I'm powerless and I can pause for a minute, 
You know, then I could begin a conversation. My sponsor put it to me that way all the time. He said, when you, he said, you know, he said, if, uh, he said, you just got to get, get quiet. He said, when you get quiet, and you pause and you get quiet, and you ask for God's peace in your heart, you can feel that peace in your heart, you can begin a conversation with God, and he'll answer you. And I'm telling you, it works every single time. The only time it doesn't work is when I don't do it. And that's the application of one, two, three. And it's actually more than that. There's so much more to it than that. But I have began that conversation, and people say, well, you know, I'm trying to do it fast. I have to be where I'm at. So if I'm in tears on the floor sobbing because I don't even know why, that's what I need to be. I need to be where I'm at. You know, I need to be at where I am. That's the beat, you know. I mean, that's that's where I need to be at. And, and you know, whatever's going on with me, it has to be okay. And then I, I, I have to get a conversation with God. I can ask him, what would you have me do here? How can I be that man I want to be? And that always works. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.